everyone, this is Koi from This and That, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take food items from your pantry or from the grocery store to create a grab-and-go emergency meal kit. Stay tuned. Welcome to This and That. I am Corey and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. And if you are one of my returning viewers, thank you again for checking out this new video. One of the things that I have seen going on between Facebook, on different threads, as well as on YouTube, in the comment section of different videos, especially after the tragedies that have been happening with the hurricane. There has been major flooding. There's been major chaos and disruption of life. And one of the things that I've seen a lot of people ask is what can I do or how can I create a meal kit or a meal prep that I could just grab and bring with me, whether it's there's bad weather coming, and I need to put it in my car as I go to work or wherever you're going, or it's that you just need to grab it because you've been told you need to evacuate and you need to evacuate now, and you're looking to grab a small amount of food to bring with you because you have no idea where you're gonna end up. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some items that I've grabbed from my pantry, and I'm also gonna go through these items and show you what type of containers you can put them in. Now, one of the disclaimers I'm going to say is that just because these are foods that my family likes to eat, they may not be foods that you may like to eat. This is just a guide or a jumping off point to help you out. Please find items that you or your family enjoys and buy those things. So you're not buying food to keep in these containers that nobody is going to eat. One of the things you're going to want to do is go through these containers at least every six months or every year to pull out foods that are going to expire. One of the things I thought about doing with these containers was to take a label that I'm going to tape to the container. All the foods that I chose don't expire till at least the end of December 2023 and many of them are beyond. So that way I know from this point forward which is October of 2024 until next year 2025 of October I know that this, these food items are good. I don't have to worry about them. I will still check on them, but I know that they will be all set. And I will put the date of October 2024 on my food prep bins, and I will know that these items are good, and I can start pulling them out next year or a little before to start eating them. Now, the other thing is you don't have to pull these items from the pantry. If you do not have overstock items that you can pull from your pantry, these are things that you can get at your local grocery store, you can get at Walmart, you can get at Dollar Tree, you can get at Dollar General. A lot of them are very simple, easy things that a lot of these places carry. You do not have to buy all these items at one time. You can choose to buy them as you're able. Maybe it's buying one or two of them a week until you have what you feel is comfortable for your grab and go emergency meal kit. So first of all, I'll talk about the containers. So the containers that I have here is if you are looking for, if you're just a person of one or maybe one or two, or you can't carry really heavy stuff, or you don't have the space in your vehicle, a five gallon bucket is a great way to go. You want to have a lid that has a rubber seal on it. You can also use a gamma lid. Those are on the expensive side. So one of these lids works great because it has the rubber seal. You can push it down and it will keep the food airtight. But a five gallon bucket is a great way to fill up some food items that you can bring with you in case of an emergency. Another thing you can do is to grab a tote. They could be different size totes depending on the size of your family or how much space you have in your vehicle, but any plastic tote will do. You wanna make sure you keep these totes stored in a place that is cool dry and is not in any direct sunlight or really any light if you can help it. You also want to make sure you, because these are plastic and rodents can get inside these, you want to make sure you check on these every so often. You don't want to leave it for a year and go back and find out a mouse or a rat has chewed a hole into your container and your food sources are gone and you spent that money for nothing. So you want to make sure you check on these. You could even use metal pails if you wanted to. I mean, the sky's the limit. 
with what you can use as long as it is something, especially if it's airtight. Obviously, these types of totes are not airtight. You can get the kind that clip down that have the little handles on the side that clip and hold a cover. Those are a really good choice, and there isn't even some ones out there that will probably be waterproof that you could use. So you could fill each of these containers. You could fill both. You could do multiple different things depending on how much time you have to get out of where you're at. So again, I've shared these things here that I pulled from my pantry and I'm going to go through them right now and they're going to go in these containers because I'm working on my own emergency pantry grab and go kits. One of the things that we never really thought about until I watched the tragedies down south is if we needed to evacuate and we needed to evacuate now, I wanted to grab something that we could throw in our trucks and we would have at least food for a day, a two, maybe three for the three of us in our house. So I found it was really important to do this. These are easy things that I can grab at other times and make a list to stock back up into my pantry. So most of these things are not even things that we eat on an everyday basis. They're actually things for an emergency or if we needed something, if we didn't have power. If we hadn't have electricity for a number of days, a lot of these things are sort of instant meals or quick meals that we could make. So these would also work really well if you had no electricity, if you were going camping. This would also be great to keep this stuff stored if you had a job loss, an injury, a death in the house, and you are struggling financially. It's obviously for really crazy weather conditions and a lot of natural disasters going on and having items prepped and put away in case of emergency is never a bad thing, no matter if it is a small container or a larger container. So here is a quick look at all the items that I've pulled from my pantry. You will notice a few things have been added since I did my intro video because I had just started to pull some of them, but not all of them. And as you can see, there is a decent amount of food here for three people for a few days. And most of these items, as I've mentioned, are easy instant meals or low prep meals where you don't need a lot of things to make them. So I'm going to start on the left here and go through these items. And the first things I went through are obviously bottles of water. You can buy a larger bottle of water if you would like. You do not use, need to use bottles. The bottles I find are easier to pack into the bucket or to the tote just because it disperses the weight a little bit. I don't have one large gallon container and I can put as many of these as I want. I can also leave them sealed so I don't have to open it and use it all at one time. I've also added Gatorade just to help out with kind of the electrolytes you can also add they have things like for kids for Pedialyte they also have uh, the powdered packets for adults that are electrolytes so if you wanted to add them to a bottle of water to help you out if you have not had a lot to eat or you haven't had a lot to drink and you're only having small amounts that will also help you as well and so the next thing I'll go to, I have a protein bar. I have a couple of Nutrigrain bars for breakfast. As you'll see, there's not a lot of breakfast food here. There's also some Kind bars. Then I have two different types of macaroni and cheese. Both of these are the types that have the foil bag with the cheese already made in it. So therefore, you do not need to have dairy products such as milk or butter in addition to the water to make this meal. I found these were more cost effective than buying the little packages of mac and cheese. They're like the little cups that you can buy that Kraft and other companies make. Those end up being like $5 and you got one serving per cup. I'd rather buy a big package that several of us can eat and have. Next up, I grabbed a couple of different types of rice. These are ones that you can either put in the microwave and obviously if you don't have power, you can't do that, but you could put it into a skillet and you could cook it that way as well. I grabbed some brown rice. This just happens to be two packages here because that's mostly what we have. There's also the Knorr pasta. These come in all kinds of different flavors. This one happens to be pasta with broccoli and a cheesy cheddar sauce. Now, some of these say that you need to also have milk and margarine. I found that that's honestly tends to be 
optional. You don't need to. I mean, obviously, if it's a cheese one, you want something a little bit on the creamy side, but it's not necessary. I forgot I had no milk when I made this one time or butter when we were out camping. So this worked just fine the way it was. We really couldn't tell the difference. So these are great to have as well. If you do want to have some type of a dairy product, these from Walmart are awesome. Mine I bought months and months ago, and it lasts all the way till January of 26 if you leave it unopened. This makes one quart, so you could easily, if you had a large container of water, you could use some of it and then create the rest for milk. You would want to use it pretty quickly. That's the only problem if you don't have refrigeration. You want to use this on a quick basis, like if you want to have cereal and you've decided to put cereal into your containers, especially ones that are small bags like this that are prepackaged, and you wanted to add those into your emergency meal kit, you could do that. Or you could also drink this, so that way you are getting, it's got fortified with vitamins A and D, and it's a quarter of a cup, it's got about 80 calories. So you can use this for drinking, you can use it for cereal, you can use it for cooking to add to other meals you may have inside your into your meal kit. Another thing I added was peanut butter. You can either add a full jar if you have the space or you can add these smaller ones that you can get at places like Walmart and Dollar General. Dollar Tree used to have them. I don't believe they do any longer. These are snack size ones, but if you're just one person, they're great. If you've got a whole family, having a big jar is great as well. Any brand of peanut butter. Peanut butter has lots of calories. It has protein. Um, two tablespoons is seven grams of protein. So just eating just peanut butter by itself with nothing else is a great way to get some calories and some protein for yourself. Beans is another good way to get protein. If you don't like beans, that's fine. There's always other alternatives for getting proteins, more protein bars, protein shakes. There's a lot of pre-made protein shakes that you don't have to refrigerate that you can put into these meal kits as well. Another thing is canned pre-made soup. We only had tomato on hand. We don't eat a lot of canned soup. I make a lot from home, but the tomato soup I like because you can eat it as is, or you can also use this as a sauce for something else. So you can add it with the rice and have like a tomato rice-based um, meal. You can use it with pasta to make a almost like a spaghetti sauce. So that's another option as well. These are ready-made beans instead of just the plain beans. This is pork and beans and already in a tomato sauce. This is great if you like those little sausages, the canned sausages. I don't have any here because we're not a big fan of them, but some people are, and you can make hot dogs and beans and just cook that up and have that, and that's a great meal as well. I also threw in two cans of tomato sauce because you can use these with something like the ramen noodles. You don't need to use the, the flavor packet that comes in these. You can just use the noodles. And instead of having boxes of pasta, which you could have boxes of pasta if you choose to in your kit, you can use these. And these are super lightweight. It's got the noodles and you can add it to the tomato sauce. You can use it with, you can add chicken with it or some other protein or just have the tomato sauce and the noodles. So ramen noodles is another thing. I've got some beef ones and some chicken ones, so you can use them as is and just heat up some water and throw the flavor packet in and eat them as they are, or you can just use the noodles as well. I also threw in this flavored uh, chicken corn soup. This has all been dehydrated, so this just as um, reconstitutes with water, hot water. This one you can add chicken to it, but you don't have to. You could just use it as is and have a corn soup. So that's something you just had to, you can add hot water to. That's very, very easy to use. Another thing I added was instant potatoes. Uh, my instant potatoes are in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers because someone had given us a very large amount of instant potatoes. We don't eat them very often, but I don't want them to go bad. And when you have them in a Mylar bag with oxygen absorbers, they can last for years, especially if they're stored correctly in cool conditions, not cold with no light. So I have two of these smaller ones because I package them in all different sizes. So this is something that you could have with any of these meals. You could have it uh, with chicken and some vegetables, that sort of stuff. 
So over here, I've got some vegetables and some meats. I've got pretty much this is like Walmart's brand of Spam, which is much cheaper than the Spam brand. And these and the one from Aldi are actually really good. Just needed some protein. Here you go. This is 180 calories for just two ounces. Not the healthiest with all the salt, but if you're hungry, it will do. I've also added a can of green beans, a can of peas. You could add potatoes. These are whole potatoes. You just boil them and cut them. You could have potatoes with chicken and carrots or any other meal. So these are just some of our favorite vegetables that I've added. And then I've also added some albacore because tuna is a really other easy thing to make that you could have tuna with a macaroni and cheese. I mean, you could have tuna with beans. I mean, you could make, and rice, you could have so many different options with tuna. You could also just eat it as is. And tuna also has 130 calories for uh, the whole can. And it's got 29 grams of protein. So that's really good. I also added cans of chicken breast because again, you can add any type, uh, you can add chicken to so many of these meals. And this is 90 calories per three ounces, and there's four servings in this container, and there's 19 grams of protein in those as well. So this is just a small amount of items that I pulled. I will be picking out more items from the grocery store when I have a chance. I'm going to add a little bit of time. But this was a jumping off point for me to start making my own emergency meal kit for my family just in case we needed it for any particular reason. So if you have any items that you can think of to add that are foods, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Again, this isn't an end all or be all. This is just a guide or a jumping off point. So the sky is really the limit. You can add as little or as much as you want to your kits. So very quickly, I grabbed some of the items, a little bit of everything, and I was able to fit all of this stuff into a five-gallon bucket. So I'll show you. I've got the instant potatoes, the milk, peanut butter, my matches, and my can opener, chicken, tuna, rice, uh, ramen noodles. I got a one, at least one of each canned good, and most of them I got almost all of them. I got all the bottles of water. I did not fit the Gatorade in, but that's okay. You can easily grab that. So all of these things from the stash here, I got all the breakfast bars. They all fit into this, and I could probably even put more in here if I wanted to. I could easily fit more ramen noodles in here. Got to make sure the can opener gets in there. So a lot of stuff fit into this one bucket. It is on the heavy side. If you are somebody who cannot handle really heavy things, I would definitely recommend going with less of the canned goods. Maybe instead of canned tuna, you're going with the pouches of tuna. Maybe you're getting chicken salad instead of cans of chicken, or you're getting smaller cans of chicken. I'm now gonna take this stuff and put it into the tote so I can show you what that looks like. So here is what I did quickly with the tote. And as you can see, I got quite a bit in there and I can obviously fit quite a bit more in here for this size tote. On one side, I've dispersed a couple of waters to distribute the weight so it's not heavy all on one side. And I put the items, some of the loose items that I didn't have as a meal on one side along with my matches and my can opener. And on the other side, I have different meals that I really quickly put together in some plastic Ziploc bags. And I'm gonna show those to you right now. Some of them are a couple of doubles. This particular meal is tuna, beans, and rice. Just something completely uh, simple. If you wanted to, you could also add the canned tomato sauce, or you could also add one of the cans that I did not put in the bags of the tomato sauce. So either one of those could go with that meal, or you could leave it plain as is. Another meal that I have here is carrots, whole potatoes, canned chicken, and chicken flavored noodles. Now, if you wanted to, you could just use the noodles as is, but you could also use the packet in here and have like a little type of chicken dinner. 
there's another bag here with, again, tuna, beans, and brown rice. Again, you can add any of the tomato products if you wanted to. Next up, I have a classic that a lot of people make all the time, which is tuna fish with macaroni and cheese and peas. So that's a really quick meal that you could also have together. Now, again, you can use these meals if there's a power outage. You don't have to use it just for an evacuation. Here's another one. This one is kind of like a pasta meal, so you would not use the chicken packet in here. You just use the noodles with the tomato sauce and the chicken to have a little pasta dish with a protein. You could also, if you wanted to, add green beans or a different type of canned vegetable with it as well. This one's another simple one, is just cheddar broccoli rice with canned chicken. And the final meal that I threw together really quick is kind of like a hot dogs and beans spinoff. There's pork in the beans here, but usually it's not very much. So if you cut up the spam, which is made with pork, it's like having hot dogs and beans, aka frank and beans. So that is another one. And you could also pair that with a vegetable if you had some more vegetables. So what I had left in here was a couple of packages of ramen noodles, the corn soup, again, all my bottles of water, two packages of instant potatoes. You could easily sub out the canned potatoes for the instant potatoes. The milk, peanut butter, my breakfast bars, another box of mac and cheese. Here's the green beans. I was looking for these because this could easily go with one of the other meals. So there you have it. There are a couple of quick meals that I threw together. So if you wanted to take the stress out of having to eat something, you've already got your meals all planned and all you have to do is grab a bag the stuff and you and your family can eat it. These are some of the things that you can put together to make your own emergency grab and go meal kit. Other things that I added in this particular tote of course is a handheld can opener. I grabbed the, this one at Walmart. It was on clearance for two dollars. I grabbed like six of them to just put away. One of them is in my camping tote which will sh I'll show you my camping totes in just a minute. But you definitely want to have a can opener if you have canned goods because not all the canned goods have the pop tart tops and even sometimes these don't open properly and sometimes you have to figure out another way to open the can so definitely don't forget to have a can opener and the other thing I definitely keep is a package of matches because if you are out in the wilderness somewhere because you are stranded and that's where you've had to evacuate to because you can't make it somewhere else because the roads are closed or they're just gone then having some matches to start a fire is super, super important. Another thing you should really have, and I will show this downstairs in just a moment with my camping stuff. So I have these bins filled, filled year round and these are camping bins or they could also be considered emergency bins if we had to leave because they're just easy to grab. They have pots and pans in them, paper goods, plastic bags, tons of utensils, tin foil, plastic wrap. I mean, you name it, it's pretty much in there. There's more can openers in there as well. I always keep extra small cans of propane. We have two cam grills, one of them, they're both small ones. One of them is in a bag with two cans of propane that are on either side, so it's always ready to go, and there is a lighter inside. I also have more lighters and matches in these bins as well. I also have bins for washing dishes because sometimes if I have to dirty dishes, I need to wash them. One of them is a great little thing from Aldi from the camping stuff they had. Another thing that's really handy is to have a set of these metal enamel type camping dishes. You can easily warm up water. You can make coffee in here. You can use the water for tea. You can warm up soups and things inside that and then pour it into these cups and drink out of them or eat out of them with utensils. So having some of those at the bare minimum is really good to have if you don't have a tote with pots and pans, of course, sleeping bags, tents, any of that sort of stuff. I mean, there's so many things you want to have knives. I mean, I've also got knives in here. I've got camping knives. I've got utility knives. I've got eating knives. You want to have those. Another thing that all of us in my house have are travel bags. Now, these could be considered emergency bags because you can just grab them and go. And all three of us in my house each have one of these. And this has 
hair tools, wipes, Q-tips, there's shavers, mouthwash, toothbrushes, toothpaste, mouthwash, earplugs, shower caps, tweezers, sunscreen, body wash, stuff for shaving, deodorant. We have these all the time. We travel with these. They're always full. When we come back from vacation, I fill each one of them for us. So each of us has a bag similar to this that we can just grab and go. Clothes are easy to grab because you can just grab a few things out of the closet and your drawers. So that's something else that you can have. I mean, literally, there is so much. There's solar power uh, chargers. There are so many, so many things. I mean, this video, I'm mostly talking about food, but I did want to share a couple of other things that we had as well that could help you or give you some ideas of other things to have to grab and go in case of an emergency or an evacuation. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Having any interaction with this video helps my videos be seen by other viewers. So please share it if you are able to, or like I said, like, comment, and subscribe because it does help with the algorithms on YouTube. As always, my friends, stay safe and be well.